Hi, Hank and Jim here. Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Stoving. My uh, blog, if you're interested in hiking and backpacking stoves, is uh, adventuresinstoving.blogspot.com. Uh, so what you see in front of you is a few different uh, stoves. Uh, the two on the left are upright canister stoves. The one on the right is a remote canister stove. A uh, remote uh, canister stove is connected to the fuel by a hose. Uh, upright canister stoves sit right on top of the tank. Um, so let's talk about some of the advantages of uh, remote canister stoves versus uh, upright canister stoves. And there's advantages and disadvantages, so let's talk about them. So uh, the main advantage of something like this, this is a Soto microregulator, which is uh, probably one of the nicest uh, stoves out there in terms of design and uh, engineering and build quality. Um, so what's nice about it? Well, it's real simple. It doesn't, uh, it's light, uh, it's small, it's compact. Uh, it doesn't need its, any legs to support it, so it can be very, very light. Um, a lot of stoves in this class are uh, coming in around two or three ounces, some even less. Uh, this is a, a monotack nat, one and three quarters ounces, very light. Um, so uh, what's the disadvantage? Well, okay, uh, one disadvantage is maybe stability. Now, uh, it's not too bad, but if you put a really bad big pot on it, uh, it gets a little tippy. Not bad, but um, uh, so there's a, some uh, with bigger pots and uh, things like that, it can be a little tippy. I, I think it's doable, but that's one complaint you'll hear. The other is wind. Okay, so let's say I put a windscreen around here. There's a standard MSR windscreen. Uh, helps if you put the pot on squarely. Okay, so what it, what's the wrong with this picture? Well, it's it's a little hard to see, but the pot here. Let me rotate the windscreen around a little bit so you can see this. The top of the windscreen and the top bottom of the pot is only like a quarter of an inch. I mean, it's less than the finger's width there. So uh, that that's a problem. That's not enough coverage. You need to have the windscreen be up you know, around like up in here more, you need to have the majority of the pot covered. So you need a much taller windscreen if you're gonna use it with an upright canister stove. But there's another problem, okay? So uh, if I've got a burner going and I've got a pot on top, that pot's reflecting heat down, uh, the windscreen's trapping heat there, and so you've got all this heat going down and getting reverberating back and all trapped in there from that windscreen and from the pot, which the pot acts like a lid on top of a jar. All that heat is going right into uh, that canister. Well, that canister is an explosive mixture of butane, butane and uh, propane or isobutane. Uh, you, can, you can have an explosion, you know, so... Uh, that's not a good thing. Generally, it's in, you're encouraged not to do it at all. If you do put a windscreen around it, you can't do a full windscreen. You have to do a partial windscreen. So in really windy conditions, that's a problem. So uh, let's look at another type of uh, stove. This is a remote canister stove. So here's the burner over here, and then we've got the fuel over here. They're connected by a line. Okay, so uh, with this one, much lower to the ground, so it's out of the wind a little bit better, uh, lower center of gravity, more stable. Generally on remote canister stoves, you have a little bit wider pot span. Uh, you've got to, you know, support, uh, you've got to have the burner have some its own support, so uh, it's, a, it's a lot more stable just the way they angle things. Generally better for bigger pots. So a little bit wider pot, that's a much more stable platform for a bigger pot. Also, if I put a windscreen around there, the fuel is nowhere in sight. The fuel is not going to be affected by that. You can put a full 360 degree windscreen. If I put the pot on there, now you look at where that windscreen is hitting on the pot, and that's about the right height. Now, the other problem, if you're using a windscreen with this type of stove here, well, that's great if I'm using, you know, uh, I mean, every canister is a different size. You've got four ounce, uh, eight ounce, and 16 ounce canisters, which are generally 110, 225, and 450 gram canisters. Well, a 450 gram canister is going to put you way up here. You've got to have a, I mean, the windscreen is just not very stable, so it's hard to use a windscreen. These, it's much easier to use a windscreen. Uh, much more stable, much more out of the wind, uh, able to handle bigger pots. Uh, but they're also a little bit heavier. So, uh, 
you know, that's the trade-off again between remote canister and upright canister. Uh, last thing is some remote canister stoves, if they have what's called a preheat loop or some kind of heating device like this loop here where the fuel line actually loops through the flame, you can run them with the canister inverted. When you're in with the canister inverted, you're not having to uh, have the ambient temperature, the outside temperature, uh, vaporize the fuel so you can run the stove in about, uh, whether it's about 20 Fahrenheit degrees or about 10 Celsius degrees cooler, then you can run a stove like this. And uh, so that's an advantage. Anyway, so those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of remote canister stoves. Remote canister stove, uh, generally more stable, more windproof. Uh, maybe you're able to run it in colder weather if you have the preheat loop, but it's also going to probably be uh, double the weight. So this is probably six ounces, whereas something like this is like three. Okay, so those are some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I'm Hike and Jim. This is another episode in Adventures in Stoving, and I thank you for joining me.